And so uh, thanks again for coming. With no further ado, I'd like to introduce Father Rudy Garcia. He is the pastor here at St. Francis of Assisi Parish in Frisco. He was ordained in 1998. He's been here as pastor for about four years, and he's served in other roles. He told me a few minutes ago about all the things that he's done. He's been director of vocations, I think vice rector of the seminary. He's been at a number of parishes like Blessed Sacrament and St. Mark's, I believe you said. <laughs> uh, and so it's a great blessing to be in such a beautiful, spacious sanctuary. And so please give a very big welcome to Father Rudy Garcia. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Heavenly Father, we consecrate this day and time to you. Thank you for making it possible for us to meet and grow in the knowledge and love of our faith. We thank you, Lord, for summoning these men here today. They come, Lord, with a sincere love for you and the Church. They come seeking holiness and determined to carry out your will in their lives. They come as men desiring to be the best versions of themselves and to be there for their spouses, their kids, their community, their church. Lord, keep them strong in the faith. Give them wisdom in all of their undertakings, courage and fortitude in their struggles and challenges, and give them love in all things. All of this we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, again, good morning, brothers. It is such an honor and blessing and joy to welcome all of you here to this 2021 North Texas Men's Conference organized by the Catholic Brothers for Christ. In a particular way, I welcome my brother priest, Father Larry Richards from the Diocese of Erie, Pennsylvania, and you, my brothers in Christ from North Texas and beyond. I understand we have here brothers from Ohio and Louisiana and from other parts of these great United States. Welcome one and all. We are delighted to have you here with us in Frisco, Texas, located in the Diocese of Dallas. You know, as I was thinking, it's kind of fitting that we gather in this particular place of Frisco for th for, because the city is known for three great things. First, it's a great place to work, right? There are many major companies and organizations that have made their headquarters here in Frisco. Second, it's considered a great place to raise a family. Frisco ISD is considered to be among the best school districts in Texas. And third, it's a great place to deepen your relationship with the Lord to grow in faith. I can tell you that our own parish here at St. Francis has 8,000 families who worship regularly and who fill this huge, beautiful church that seats 1,600. And I mention all of this because all of you here are men who, one, work hard. You believe in the dignity of human work. Second, you are men committed to your families. You want to be awesome fathers and husbands. And third, you seek to be godly men of the church. And are not these three principal characteristics, the virtues that St. Joseph exhibited, this man whom in this year the church honors as she dedicates this year to St. Joseph? St. Joseph, is a model for us because one, he is a model for work. Now, not just one particular form of work, he was a carpenter, he knew manual labor, but he is a model of work in every form of honest occupation. St. Joseph teaches us to see work not as a drudgery, not as a punishment for original sin, not as an expression of selfish personal affirmation, or the means by which we acquire material things, but work seen as a collaboration with God, our Creator, and we offer to Him the best of ourselves through our daily work, 
putting into play our intellectual and manual uh, virtues and qualities and imbuing those with human and Christian values and virtues. St. Joseph was a tradesman who worked for his living. And so we can have frequent recourse to him to ensure that our work, the work that we do, never loses its transcendental value, its innate dignity. St. Joseph, no doubt, had Jesus by his side while he worked. You can imagine St. Joseph, you know, asking Jesus, you know, would you hold this piece of wood while I saw it? Right. And, and Joseph would have probably taught the child Jesus to use the tools of carpentry, a chisel or a plane. And can't you imagine St. Joseph, when he got tired, that he would look at his son and realize that through his very work he was providing for the Son of God himself, and therefore his work would acquire a whole new meaning, a whole new value. And so let us, especially when we grow tired, do what St. Joseph did. Look at Jesus and have an awareness of the presence of God throughout our day. St. Joseph is also a model in fulfilling our vocation in life. Now for Joseph, that meant that he was to be a husband and a father. What a wonderful thing to meditate upon the words of St. Matthew when he wrote in his gospel, Joseph, the husband of Mary. Here you have a summary of St. Joseph's vocation and what gave Joseph the context for developing his personality and achieving sanctity. He was the husband of Mary. With the exception of Jesus, no one ever cared for Mary more than St. Joseph did. No one protected her with more vigilance. Joseph was not only the guardian of Mary, he was her husband. And Joseph eventually came to understand that Mary's child was from the Holy Spirit. And Mary was to be the mother of the Redeemer, and he was given a mission to take care of Jesus as his very own son. And as a consequence, he loved Mary more than ever. St. Joseph was the foster father to Jesus. In the Gospels, Joseph is repeatedly referred to as father. Without a doubt, this is how Jesus called Joseph in the, intimacy, in the intimacy of their home in Nazareth. Jesus was known in the community as the carpenter's son. He was the son of Joseph. Joseph gave Jesus his name. Joseph protected Jesus and Mary in the flight to Egypt. Jesus would have obeyed Joseph as if he were his natural father. Joseph loved Jesus almost if he had really begotten him. And he looked upon Jesus, upon this son before him, as a wonderful gift of God that God had entrusted to him. And so Joseph would consecrate his energies, his time, his great concern, his care to this gift of God. So let us ask St. Joseph that we might love our vocation and to teach us how to love and cherish Jesus and Mary as Joseph did. Third and finally, St. Joseph was a man of God. The Gospel writer summarized the virtues of St. Joseph in these few words. He was a just man. A just man. St. Joseph was just towards God and he was just towards other people. And the justice of St. Joseph is, the most evident, is most evident in the testimony of his purity of heart, of his openness to the will of God, of his readiness to do the will of God and bring that will of God to fruition, no matter what the challenges or the obstacles that he faced. I imagine Joseph as a very productive member of his community, as a joyful person, right? Friendly member of the community. And through his just behavior, through his holiness before God, St. Joseph would have served other people, those who were beside him, 
generously, unstintingly. He was a man of his word in his business dealings. He was a good friend to others in the community. It was this man whom God had entrusted with his mother and son, and God was not disappointed. And so let us ask St. Joseph that we too might see God in everything that happens to us, that we might be men who value our work, that we might know the greatness and the transcendence of our vocation in Christ, and that we, like St. Joseph, would dedicate ourselves to justice and holiness, to giving God his due, giving him priority in our lives, and out of our love for God, extending that love towards all whom we might meet. Again, welcome to St. Francis of Assisi Catholic Church. It's an honor to host you today. Let us know how we can make your stay comfortable. We're delighted to have you here. Thank you. God bless. Thank you, Father Rudy. And you know, without the support of wonderful priests like Father Rudy Garcia, something like this would not be able to happen.